And good afternoon or good morning wherever it is you are and welcome to Nautel and we're here for another webinar introducing the NV Light series of analog FM transmitters. I'm Chuck Kelly and I'm very glad everybody's here with us today. We also have with us the father of the NV Light, the head of the FM project management team, Mr. Scott Marchand. Scott. Hello everyone. Glad to have you with us today and congratulations on another award-winning Product introduction, Scott. No, it was it was a real pleasure for sure. Uh, what, let's talk about a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. The the, the list of things we're going to to, to communicate. Uh, we've got a quick summary on the MB Light. We're going to talk about a little bit about the history of how we got to this point. Uh, we're going to talk about the fact that we've optimized the design in, in some unique ways. We're going to go into detail and, and get inside the product, even getting in and driving an MB Light. And then we're going to do a, a, a large tour of the series and then there's time for questions and that's the right time to talk about this. If you have questions, look at the GoToWebinar screen, assuming you're not watching this on tape delay. Uh, but if you're watching this live, you have the opportunity to ask questions and you can just click and type in a question and we're going to hold all those type questions until the end and then this is your opportunity to uh, stump both Scott and I. So without further ado, this is how we got to this point. In 2008, Nautel introduced the NX series, which was the first transmitter that had the advanced user interface, which is an internal web server with all kinds of integrated test equipment, spectrum analyzers, and in the case of the NX, network analyzers, listens you audio, and, and you can monitor and control with just a web browser from any place in the world, assuming you've connected your transmitter up to the internet. And to date, over 2,500 AUI ship trans or equipped transmitters have shipped around the world. That's pretty impressive. Then in 2009, the NV series was introduced, which was this largest, highest power solid state single box solution ever in the industry with an integrated exciter, smallest footprint, high power solid state FM, with advanced HD radio capabilities such as HD power boost and independent sidebands and there's over a thousand of the MV series that have already been shipped. And then in 2010, the VS series, low power FM series of transmitters was introduced at the 300, 1 kilowatt and 2.5 kilowatt levels. And this introduced a whole series of new features. So not only does it have all the features of the advanced user interface and the MV series, but we added audio over IP, we added internal or man and side option, push radio, all sorts of different things were added to the VS, and that got us to this point, and there are over 1,500 of the VS sold in just uh, two years. So that's pretty exciting. So now, drum roll, there's even more, the Cool Stuff award-winning NV Light series of FM transmitters, and they are for analog FM. Now, Scott, that was a pretty interesting decision we made to to target a transmitter, not at digital, as everybody's been targeting digital for the last, I don't know, 10 years or something. All the innovation, all of the development has been towards digital, and here we come out with an analog-only transmitter for the probably 90% of the market that really isn't interested in digital right now, right? It's a it's a it's a it's an interesting decision. It doesn't change anything about the fact that Nautel is dedicated uh, to being a, a a leader in the digital technology area. But golly gee, wouldn't it be nice to have a transmitter that's totally optimized for being a an analog transmitter? And one of the things that Scott you taught me about was when you as a design engineer and managing this development, uh, when you optimize a design. When you narrow a specification, take things out of it, you can optimize things. And, and we chose to optimize this transmitter efficiency and price. Correct. So the, the, this gave us the opportunity to do things differently than if we had to also include digital as part of the design specification. That's right. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit at a high level about the MB Light. Um, it's based on the proven MV series architecture. Well, that is not to say that there's very much that's the same as the MV. I mean, it looks the same as an MV, but the amplifiers are different, the power supplies are different. It's a whole new design project. That's right. In order to get 
type of performance that we demanded from the NV Light series, we needed to reevaluate the power supply, reevaluate its efficiency specifications, reevaluate the amplifier inside the RF module, and just the overall structure and design components, all maintaining some of the you know pre-existing and, and field performed um, NV architecture. The NV architecture works very, very well, but we, we talk about adding the, the improved efficiency and all the VS series features, the huge number of features that the VS added for the first time in the industry. And, and so we end up with efficiency that's 72% typical efficiency. That's right. Now, I was told, a little bird told me that downstairs in the test room, you're actually doing a little better than that. Yeah, we've got an MD5 running, an MD5 light that's actually running around 73 at max power. That's amazing. That's amazing. And, and all at a price point that's never been seen in, in, in the last 10 years in, in, in the digital transmitter. So this is an analog-only transmitter. It allows us to do things differently. Okay. So the analog-only MV light series, the 3.5 will go up to 4.13 kilowatts, the 5 will go up to 5,500 watts, the 7.5 up to 8,300 watts, and the MV10 up to 11 kilowatts. And all of them go way on down to very low powers. Yeah. Okay. So these are the five things that we think are most important about the MV light series. First is it is a no compromise performance transmitter. There's no transmitter that you're going to find in the world that's got better specifications and performance than the MV Light. Um, it is not a second class citizen to any transmitter, bar none. Um, it uses the proven MV architecture, has the intelligent features. We're going to talk a lot more about the VS audio features, outstanding efficiency, and exceptional value. So, from a performance standpoint, I mean, these specifications speak for themselves. There's, there's nothing like this. Well, apart from our other FM transmitters. That's right. They're <laughs> completely on par with our current NV and VS series transmitters. That's right. And then the proven architecture of the NV series. You know, this is this is something that we said over a thousand NVs have been shipped already, and and they all have a a, a structure which is, for instance, high in in uh, uh, the the ability to have uh, no comp, no single point failure. That's right. I mean, not till goal when when I first got here 15 years ago was to stay on air at all costs. So. We didn't compromise that at all with the NV light series. Okay. And, and when we talk about the intelligent features, we'll go into a lot more detail on this, but we're talking about the complete bunch of features that came along with the VS. And it, with a couple of interesting additions, uh, push radio is now far more developed in the system, and you'll see that. Uh, we've also added ice cast demodulation, so you can have an ice cast broadcast come right in via IP into the transmitter and be broadcast. And we've added, um, at least in the in the development stage now, uh, not telephone home, the ability to have this transmitter report back to us so that we can help you troubleshoot your train. It's going to revolutionize the customer service portion of, of our work. And the efficiency, 72% plus AC into RF out. That's, you know, one of the things that I, it didn't really come home to me when we were talking about these numbers until I got in front of the unit and notice not only how quiet it was, which I guess is because you don't need so many fans, but also how cool the air exhaust air at the top was. Oh, there's on the order of a six to eight degree temperature rise. That's amazing. That's amazing. And that also means that not only do you save energy in the in the running of the transmitter, but you save energy in cooling your building as well. Absolutely. So you save twice. Yeah. And then the value. I mean, it's 20% less on average than the uh, the MD series, and that, that makes a huge difference to people. Why should you pay extra for a transmitter that can do digital if all you needed to do is analog? So let's get inside the MD light a little bit. Um, some things that never change. It's, we have the same easy access to connectorized boards and assemblies. We have the Nautel legendary conservative design. It's all built here in North America. Interestingly enough, you can spend all day looking at this thing, you're not going to find any potentiometers no. and trimmers. No. And I think that's really cool because that means you don't have to fine adjust it to make it work right. It's totally broadband, no adjustments, there's easily removable fans and a washable air filter. Let me ask you one more thing, Scott. One of the things that I noticed looking at both the front and the back, and we'll look at the back in a second, but how clean it is. I mean, you must have you must have gotten feedback from the industry that people like things that are really easy to connect up and, and, and hook up and, and get inside the service. Yeah, having done this for a number of years, you tend to, to get a lot of feedback from 
previous generation product. So looking at this product as an opportunity to implement all of those suggestions and improvements, uh, we really try to improve the installation, AC installation in particular, which we're looking at pictures now, removable panels, temporary removable panels that open up access to the terminal block for AC entrance. You're talking about this one in the upper right hand exactly. corner here. Why don't you walk us through what that is and what it means? So this, this panel is really just an exhaust grill panel for the power supply, but it acts as a safety barrier so that when customers are in the back of the transmitter in, in this region uh, connecting to the exciter, this, this acts as a guard to prevent access to this uh, more of a safety area where the AC would be connected. But during the installation process, we felt it would have been ideal to remove, have a temporary plate that could be removed to really open up that space so that the customer wasn't confined when doing their AC installation. That's really the only requirement for gaining access to that. So of course, the panel would then be reinstalled, a safety panel would be installed at the back, and then everything was done at the front. So the how back. hard is it to change this panel? I mean, what there's four screws. It's very, very simple. Okay. Easy access, no interference with any other assemblies. So. Now let me, the AC is fed from the top of the transmitter down this wall here of the transmitter and then comes out just above here. Yeah. And, and, and would you explain you, that? You can bit? see a duct opening here. We actually mm -hmm. run a duct between the inside skin and the outside leg to try to keep, again, the number of wires uh, down to a, a minimum. So not only do you have an aesthetically pleasing transmitter, but the wires themselves, the AC wires that have some pretty significant current capacity are protected behind the shell and aren't running from the top of the transfer down to the bottom. And we also have in, in current models bottom AC entrance. So the customer can bring um, AC from the bottom and then wire to the input side of the terminal box as well. Very flexible. Speaking of flexibility, suppose a guy gets a transmitter and he realizes that the AC mains aren't exactly what we thought they were. That we've got single phase instead of three phase or or something, or Y instead of Delta. Yeah. How hard is it? What do you have to do? I mean, in other other transmitters, other people's products, things like that, you got to change the transformer, you got to change the breaker, or you got to yeah. change the wiring harness. What happens here? Yeah, not so here at all, Chuck. Actually, so in an NV seven and a half or an NV ten light, there's actually eight wires at the bottom side of this terminal block, terminal block that would be repositioned. Mm -hmm. Now we would provide quick. Uh, configuration guides that make it very simple and easy to identify what wires have to move. Um, and for the three and a half and the five, there's actually only six wires. Quite quite simple, actually. Okay, great. And of course, just like in the MV series, you've got your three big lights here to indicate AC is present. Yeah. And you have your isolated ground stud here for proper performance and lightning protection and things like that. Absolutely. Those familiar with MV would, would be very comfortable with this transmitter. What about the toroid? Where do you put the AC toroids? The toroid we're actually planning on installing, it isn't shown in this picture, but there's actually going to be a pre-installed AC toroid here. We've, we found over the years that customers would either fail to install the ferrite. Um, so this way, we, we've done it for them. And again, all goes towards the convenience, a quick install of the product, and less little things to think about when you're already busy doing many, many other things. Yeah, I always find the toroid in the package just after I connected everything up. Right. Don't really want to take it apart again. So that's a good move. That's a good move. Okay, so let's talk about configurability. This this transmitter works across all the known configurations of AC power from 180 to 264 single or three phase delta or 312 to 457 watt. Correct. And the RF output typically is inch and five eighths across the range. But if you want, it's possible to get it in either 7 eighths or 3 and 8. Um, all the presets and audio inputs, all the remote I.O. is all configurable. We'll talk about the remote I.O. a little bit more as we get further into the screens. Talk about this automatic AC recovery. This is something you're quite proud of, I think. Yeah, so, I mean, with all our products, we have automatic AC recovery, but we took the opportunity to, one, operate off of a generator. Uh, we, we have a beta system in the field that we uh, were fortunate enough that they have a generator installed, and we took that as an opportunity to, to see how the transmitter would behave. And we were actually quite pleased um, with how it behaved, it behaved flawlessly. Uh, also, we have uh, options for UPS, um, uh, UPS uh, insula, uh, interface kits, um, but automatic recovery, in, in a sense, is when AC goes down, it recovers back to the previous state. 
Okay. And you also have the ability to miss a, a cycle or so of AC and it just keeps on moving. Yeah, we might see a less than half second interruption with a 45 millisecond loss of AC time. So it's, it's remarkable that this transmitter doesn't even flinch. That's excellent. Okay. And of course, the approach that we took uh, beginning on the MV and through the, the VS is the integrated exciter. We kind of demystified the exciter a bit and, and made it part of the transmitter and, and made the AUI embrace the exciter as well. That's right. That single point interface for the customer to gain access to all subassemblies, not a display for the exciter and then a display for the transmitter. And the least expensive version of this transmitter is with the same digital exciter. There's no analog exciter built in Italy or anything like that here. This is a Correct. this is a standard, full capability, uh, full performance, no compromise audio performance digital direct to digital exciter. Okay, let's talk about the RF module. This is pretty cool. The, the other modules that we've had have been a little heavier. This is yep. a lot lighter. Yeah, notice Dimen that immediately. Dimensionally, this module is uh, not as tall. Uh, which aids in reducing the weight significantly. It's about 8 to 10 pounds lighter than the uh, NV module. Um, it's got four 750-watt amplifiers. The module itself is capable of 3 kilowatts. We've removed the IPA, um, not only to aid in cost reduction, but just simplicity in the module. Again, uh, single point failure. Single point failure, another serious component that we were able to eliminate. Um, the amplifiers themselves have much higher gain, which work towards allowing us to remove that, that IPA as well. Let's talk about LDMOS a second. A lot of companies are talking about LDMOS. For us, it's been no big deal. We've been using it in our transmitters since the VS2.5. That's right. And, and, but it does offer certain benefits, and, and we're glad to bring them to this power range. Yeah, high gain, high efficiency, larger footprint, lower our beta, cooler operating transmitter, lower temperature rise, and more reliable operation long term. That's excellent. And so you've been very happy with the performance. And we've had nothing but good luck with them in the, in the VS2.5. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about the redundancy, the fact that there isn't any single point of failure in this transfer. That's right. So the modules themselves in the 10, which is the picture we're looking at, there's four modules, four 3 kilowatt modules. Obviously, with a module failure, there would be a reduction in output power. Every module has two power supplies, so you can afford to lose one power supply with, again, a a, a reasonable reduction in power. Uh, the control AUI and UI represent redundant control features in the event the UI were to fail, you still have your AUI. Um, the cooling fans, every module has six fans and can operate with one fan failure. The uh, parallel combiners and filters, it's, uh, yeah, it's a very, very redundant system. One of the things I absolutely love is when you look down here at these power supplies, so as I understand it, the four power supplies on the outside and the top row and the four on the bottom are, are for the pH. That's right. And the, the two in the center, vertically, are the ones that are for the other stages, like the exciter and the controller and things like That's that. That's right. Well, we refer to it as a low voltage power supply. Right. But in fact, they're all the same voltage. And in fact, they're all the same supply. So exactly the same. One thing that I think is really cool is if you had a controller supply go bad, um, just guessing what could happen, um, you could take one from any other spot and put it in there and you're back on the air. Yeah. Every, every, every supply second. is the same. And are there other supplies in the transmitter? Not at all. Stuck on the walls and things like that? No. no. We eliminated the supplies, the AC to DC supplies in the exciter. And now this exciter actually runs off of 48 volts DC. Interesting point because, in fact, the, the whole transmitter runs off 48 volts DC. That's true. So should there be people that are interested in solar or something, come talk to us. We can figure out some cool things to do. That's right. Okay. So let's talk more about these, these uh, new switching power supplies. Right. So these switching power supplies boast a, a very impressive 95% um, AC to DC efficiency. Um, it's actually capable of 2,700 watts, over 2,700 watts of, of power. We're only running them typically around 2 kilowatts to, to get as much power as we need. So you can imagine they're actually conservatively, very, very conservatively rated. Which is typical for what yeah, we do. Yeah, that's how we do business. Yeah. So the uh, the power supplies also are, are have much more intelligence than the previous generation power supply in that we can interrogate them via an RS-45 bus and get all internal diagnostics, metering, and status, uh, all for display on the AUI so that you can see, even down to the power supply, what its current state is. Um, 
They have a very impressive reliability uh, specification. They're blind mate and hot pluggable. Excellent. Okay. So now let's talk about the exciter. It's it's the same basic exciter as is in the VS. Right. Same card, but we have a much higher power amplifier in here because right. there's no IPA. That's right. We're actually using the same amplifier in the exciter mm -hmm. as we are in the RF module, which which goes towards sparing and compatibility. You know, when you're buying spares, you don't have to buy many different types of amplifiers or many different types of power supplies. You buy one type of amplifier, and that acts as a uh, you know a means of spare for no matter what failure might occur. Okay. So let's talk about the integrated exciter controller. It, it's fed, as you, as you mentioned, with 48 volts DC. Uh, it's got 750 watt capable output, um, but it's conservatively operating at 110 watts. And it's got the same fan as the ERF module. Yeah, again, again that's, that's, that's right. That's right. Okay. Scott, this is the, uh, the, the back panel of the MD Light exciter controller. And uh, let's, let's talk about the, the various uh, things that we can see uh, on this screen and, and uh, what you can see on this panel. And obviously, on the left-hand side, you've got the RF output, the monitor point. This is the uh, the fan. I guess it's the same fan that's in the modules. Is that right? That's correct, Chuck. Okay. And then we, this is over here. All of these are the same as would be on the MV exciter, or the, sorry, the VS exciter. So all of those inputs and outputs, the LAN connections, all of those things are all exactly the same. The exciter link con connects to the controller. Um, uh, and the rest of the transmitter, and then over here, this is the uh, this is where the exciter controller gets its power. That's right, and it's actually DC power, Chuck. Forty-eight volts. Okay, and then we have system control and and various interconnect additional signals well. required for transmitter operation. So it's pretty simple. I mean, the basic connection of this transmitter could be as simple as when you're connecting up to the exciter, which is already which is already in the transmitter, so all the other connections are made. All you got to do is either plug in a LAN connection or an AES EBU or whatever, and you're good to go. You're That's ready. That's right. You're ready very to fly. simple. Okay. Very good. So let's continue on. Okay. So let's talk about the things which are optional in the MD Light. What what things can people do to add to the add to the transmitter? So they have the option to purchase one of our Orban Inside, uh, Orban 5500 integrated uh, audio processors, and they so can very purchase. Very, very popular. That's, that's, that's right. right. And they can uh, install one in the exciter and one in the controller as well with the integrated exciter. Mm -hmm. They also have the option to purchase our remote interface board, which gives them a more convenient connection point for their remote uh, remote I/O. So this is just like in the in the MV Exciter. You've got a PC card with a bunch of buttons and a bunch of lamps, and it allows you to kind of see the status of your parallel remote, which is completely separate than the AUI. That's it's completely right. Completely in parallel. With yeah. That. In the event the AUI were to become inoperable or the local UI were to fail, this is that board that gives you that local indication of the remote status of the transmitter. But just to clarify, you still have all the parallel inputs and outputs that the VS does, for instance right on those D connectors on the back of the of the controller card. And when we go back here, you can see those D connectors here. That's right. Um, right there that are that have all those parallel inputs and outputs, analog inputs and outputs and all that kind of stuff. Effectively this board is an extension of those outputs, but with additional features for local monitoring. Okay. And then the UPS interface option? That's right. Um, obviously to improve recovery time uh, from AC we try to reduce the reboot time of, of uh, control systems. So the UPS interface option allows us to greatly reduce the AC recovery time, um, which you know some sites have those types of problems, poor mains regulation and so on. So this would greatly improve that recovery time. One of the things that's very interesting as we've moved into a new era in technology is that because there's more and more computing technology being used as controllers for transmitters, reboot times become time you're off air from the time that the AC mains is dropped. Correct. So um, one of the things, you've, you've worked on this two ways. One is to improve, three ways. One is to improve the time at, the, from the time that we have a complete power failure 
to the time we get on the air. And, and without the UPS option, how long is that approximately? Well, it varies with how long you're actually off air. Okay. If you have really short interruptions, it can be... Well, that was the other thing I was going to get to. Correct. Yeah, it can okay. be less than half a second. Okay. Longer interruptions can be on the order of a few seconds. Okay. So the very first time you power the transmitter on, if it's never seen power at your site before, it's been off for days, how long does it take to get up? It's uh, on the order of five to seven seconds. Okay. And then subsequently, you can go up to like, what, a half a second or something like that and still be able to respond, stay Absolutely. on air for a Absolutely. Okay. Our, our window is about 20 seconds. If you lose 20 seconds, that constitutes a full cold restart. Okay. So anything less than Anything that, less than 20 seconds, you should be better than the worst case. Okay. And then this UPS option basically means you're what? Uh, it cuts that by far in half. Okay. All right. So redundant low, low voltage power supply. One thing that's really cool about this transmitter is that all the power supplies are all identical. Correct. They're all in essence, low voltage supplies. They're all 48 volt type supplies. Interchangeable. Completely interchangeable, completely hot pluggable. So you have the ones that are associated with the PAs, but you also have the ones that are associated with the low voltage. And we give you one of those, which runs the controller and the, and the exciter and things like that, and the fans. Uh, but if you need redundancy on that, you can buy another redundant supply and plug it into a slot that already exists. And it's really that simple. You remove a blank plate and slide the power supply in, Configure the system to say, I have dual LVPS, and away you go. There you go. And, and also, since they're all redundant, you could have one on the shelf that serves as a spare for any of the supplies that might have a problem. And you can replace one of those supplies, and you only need to stock one. There's no little tiny supplies hanging around inside the, inside the box somewhere. Correct. Okay. And we also have the opportunity, of course, if some people want, to have a, a hot standby automatically switched uh, exciter. So they can buy an extra exciter, plug it in, and the and the cables come along with that exciter. And a couple the, of patch cables, but the existing coaxial switch is already in the And control for that switch and all that sort of yeah. thing is all built into the AUR. Excellent. Okay. Now from an air handling standpoint, you've really simplified things because a lot of people in the past have said, um, why does the uh, coaxial cable or the, the heliax have to come out in the middle of my air duct. Right. We had some little nooks and crannies on previous generation products, so we felt we'd come up with a more geometrically pleasing shape, something a little more standard for the HVAC guys to deal with. So you can see in the center of the transmitter, there's um, a, a square grill mm -hmm. where the exhaust duct uh, network would actually sit over. And um, just to move on to some of the other conveniences that we've incorporated, we've We've allowed for uh, pilot holes on these little plates yep. that uh, for AC entrance where the electrician can remove the plate conveniently uh, without having to be on top of the transmitter, cut a hole with a, a center punch, and then install his tech cable or, or so on, and then reinstall it quite and conveniently. And the hole can be exactly the size needed for his conduit or, or the cables that are going through That's there. right. Excellent. And you've got one of those in each corner of the transmitter. So, for instance, this one here might be for AC. This That's one here correct. might be for audio and and perhaps the uh, the Ethernet connection. And if you've got that new special card for the remote, the remote interface, uh, yes, would be where you'd bring the cable in to connect to the parallel remote connection. Correct. Connections. And there's your standard RF connection. Anything special about that? Uh, well, it's actually standard one and five eighths, but it, we offer the option to go to three and eighths or seven eighths. Okay. Very good. And you have the option as well of top or bottom AC entrance. That's correct. Okay. Now, let's, let's, the AUI is such a critical part of these transmitters. Let's switch over and uh, actually walk through a, uh, an existing transmitter that's sitting in our factory as we speak. And we'll have to log into it here. So, but it doesn't want to let me do that. So, here we go. Now we'll do it. And now we're bringing up the AUI. Okay, so here's the advanced user interface in an existing 10 kilowatt Nautel NB light series transmitter. Um, it has what looks like the same AUI as the NX and the NV and the VS and looks pretty much the same. What's different, Scott? Well, we've uh, taken the opportunity to implement a number of enhancements and. 
as, as a product matures, you try to make it a little more intuitive for the customer. So we've removed a lot of the mystery around it, and we've uh, really streamlined how we deal with preset control, where we have really quick access to presets that have already been saved in the system, easily to act, easy to activate, assuming they've already been pre-configured. That would have taken at least three button presses before you <clears> get where correct, you were. Correct, yep. correct. Um, we also have included the ability to save meter states. Uh, in the past, our meters were volatile, so customers who like to have certain meters available for certain tasks, troubleshooting or uh, you know, validation of the product's performance, uh, can now actually come in and create those lists and create a default uh, identified as the, as the asterisk here. Uh, that is the one that would load in upon login. Uh, but you can have a, a set of, of lists, easy to save, and that's what uh, would result in these nice meters over here coming up. So this is kind of the analogy is, is you buy one of those really, really expensive European sports cars. And when your key is the one that goes into the car, the seat sets itself to the right and mirrors set right. itself to the right position. This is just like that. If you log in as somebody else, you get a different set of meters, which is what you saved for your setup. That's the time correct. Before. I think there's, I'm, I'm hearing on the speaker here of my notebook, I'm hearing a lot of people going, finally! Yes. This is a really yes. good, this was, a, this was requested by many people. Okay, so what else we got here that's new? So uh, we also, if we go into the menu option. Wow, that's all different. Right. So we've got uh, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing icons. And uh, just going through the list, we'll see that this transmitter is actually configured with an Orban inside, mm -hmm. uh, which for those who are familiar with some of the 5500 settings. Very yeah, familiar. Very familiar. Those, uh, we give you all those great preset configurations and compressor yeah, settings. Let's load the load so they can see the presets, which are the same presets you could get with any Orban process. All default loaded, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can save your own just like you can in the Orban. And, that's yeah. right. Okay. Great. So just moving back out. Well, we have got to show my one favorite feature. Oh, there. great. You okay. forgot to do that. Um, when you set your, your, your meters, you can bring up this other set of meters, and you can stick that over here in the corner. And then while you're doing your settings, you can watch the settings and those meters dynamically. So you how can they're set affecting. Up. Even yeah. though you may be remote, you can see how those meters look. Okay, so what else is new? So in this version of code, we actually also uh, incorporated some, of, uh, some user setting improvements. Mm -hmm. So moving through them, we have email configuration. And many people will be happy to see that we, we now offer authentication for uh, the requirement of a username and password. Um, in the event the email server requires encryption, it's automatic and the system uh, accounts for that. So what is this really where I mean, there's dozens of systems out there that do different systems for email encryption. Will this work with Gmail, for instance? Absolutely. That's where we've done a lot of our testing on. Okay. All right. And what else we got here? Uh, we've also incorporated SNN traps, mm -hmm. uh, which allow unsolicited messages from the device to the SNMP server. We should, we should probably mention uh, that SNMP is a, a, an industrial control methodology uh, protocol for dealing with equipment. And a lot of our customers who are in large systems like an SNMP com, uh, communications path uh, to their transmitters. And, what we're doing now is, is actually making it not only functional, but bringing on some of the enhancements that have come out for SNMP over the over years. That's right. This feature is definitely evolving. Okay. So if we go back to the menu page, we'll see there's also a scheduler. And the okay. scheduler allows us to basically set rules that are uh, that govern preset changes at specific times. So I can say every Sunday night at 10 o'clock I want to turn the transmitter off. That's right. Or I want to change audio inputs every top of the hour um, to go to a satellite feed uh, from 0000 to um, 00500, five minutes after the hour. Yeah. And it would automatically switch presets which would then change the audio input. So you could, for instance, go to a satellite receiver or something like that automatically. Now the problem with that is, how do you keep the darn clock on time? Well, that's another feature that we incorporated. In order to make this scheduler work, we had to incorporate 
an NT, an NTP network time protocol manager. And if you bear with me, there you go. You cool. can see here that we've got NTP enabled. So the user would connect the system to their LAN, and the NTP server would actually deal with synchronizing the transmitter's clock, deals with daylight savings time, and so on, and keeps that scheduler on track. So here's where we set up the daylight savings time. Ours is, ours is set for Halifax, Nova Scotia, which is Atlantic time zone. But for instance, it allows us to, let's, let's choose the part of the Americas in the United States here, I know that there are parts of Indiana, for instance, that don't, don't change time zones. And let's see if we can find anything like that. Yeah, see, there's this portion of Indiana that doesn't change time zones. And we can change to that rule, and it will automatically keep yourself up to date. And I believe, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but actually this whole section, as countries change their rules relative to NTP, that actually can be updated in the software Absolutely. as well. So this machine won't become obsolete. Correct. Okay. What's next? So going back to our menu, we've got user accounts. So user accounts have been around for a little while, but we've offered a more intuitive method of, of setting permissions mm -hmm. for different users. You might have administrative users or read-only users or full control users that you want only specific uh, permissions to be granted for. And this menu allows you to do that. Right. And there was, we actually, I remember getting a phone call from a customer who said, I want to give my jocks the capability of turning the station on and off because that's required by law. I want them to be able to read the meters because I need them to do that. But I don't want them to be able to change the frequency. That's right. So we can give them just those, those rights. Or we can give them just the rights to read the meters and not change anything. It's, it's all what they set up and configure as a user. Okay. That's next. right. Well, this uh, the AUI also supports phone home, which is something Nautel has, has been working on and developing, and you just won an award. We just won an award, a pick mm -hmm. award. So uh, that basically allows users to give permission to not the Nautel phone home server to receive data yep. through their firewall. It's single direction, and we're basically capturing all that data in time, so that, for example, our customer service staff, in the event that there's an issue, we can go in look at the data that's been collected over time and actually look at a histogram of what happened before the event and what happened after or during, look at specific meters that have been recorded and logged. It, it, I think it's going to revolutionize how we enhance our customer service experience. And potentially it gives our customers the capability of managing networks of stations that are AUI equipped um, in, a, in a very dynamic fashion. Look, what we had at the NAB, for instance, was a map of the country and, and they could show just their transmitters and, and uh, see the status of those by the color of the dots over their city for instance. That's right. How about this playlist editor? That's a brand new thing. Yes, so we, uh, you know, in the effort of trying to deal with potential STL failures, we've offered a means to back up your audio uh, which works really well in conjunction with the scheduler if you had to move to non-live content. Uh, you can set up playlists that are available on a USB drive that you plug into the back of the controller, and you can pull that content into the playlist. Okay, so we can, we can dynamically change things yeah. while we're on the air here. And we can create new playlists, we have multiple playlists, and we can drag and drop things from the USB device, which could be a, a memory stick or could be a hard drive right into the new playlist. That's right, and in your presets you go and define your audio source, in this case it would be secondary digital source, which acts as your playlist. Okay, and there's even a jump command, so we can go from playlist to playlist uh, this way as well. That's right. Okay, very cool. And this also ties into the, uh, the, the push radio concept, this capability is, right. is part of push. Okay? Right. So, I mean, obviously over, over the years we've, we've incorporated a number of enhancements, but you know these the ones we've just mentioned apply to the AUI. I, I would also like to mention um, just a couple more improvements that we've incorporated that are accessible via the local UI. Yep. Um, signal generator uh, gives the user the ability to you know apply test tones for example to set up equalization uh, and so on. Uh, we've also allowed users to do an audio low threshold and timeout that drive indication alarms where they can receive notifications on. Right. Um, 
Yeah, so I mean, at the end of the day, we're trying to listen to users and give them the best overall experience that they can. That Very we good. Can do. Very good. So let's let's continue on and uh, and look back at what we were presenting before. There's and the transmitter has live wire inside, built in from uh, Axia Telos Omnia. Um, it's a digital standard for interfacing studios to. Uh, to transmitters, or in this case, it could be any kind of equipment, but so many pieces of equipment in the industry are uh, equipped with the live wire interface, which is a Cat5 cable interface, and and this is the first, or the Nautel transmitters are the first transmitters to have live wire integrated, so they're completely live wire ready devices. And we have Shoutcast and new IceCast input, so these are two protocols for webcasting, but they can be used as emergency broadcast alternatives. So if I lose my STL, for instance, on air, the shoutcast or, and, the, and the station is webcasting, you can program the transmitter to go out and find automatically uh, the shoutcast or icecast uh, based on a loss of signal from your STL, and you've programmed in your shoutcast and icecast inputs, and it would automatically go out and, and grab that and put it through the Orban processor, if you like, and straight on the air and, uh, and and keep you on the air in an emergency. So let go back to the internal USB player, which is the, what's, what's the unit downstairs is playing right now. It utilizes USB memory sticks or USB hard drives and can have a collection of recorded MP3 or WAV files for playback. And this is the new playlist manager here, so we can actually drag and drop cuts from what's on the stick here into a playlist, and then you've got multiple playlists that you can use. And interestingly, you can upload, you can edit the playlist remotely via the web server, via the AUI, of course, and you can also upload files via the web server. So in, in effect, we create an FTP site on that memory stick, and we can upload new files. It has automatic fail-safe switchover from various audio sources, you know, it becomes a studio box. So that kind of leads us into Orban Inside, because if you've got your audio sources inside the box, such as MP3 players, where else can you put your audio processor? So that's where the Orban Inside comes in. And it works with an optional DSP card that mounts inside any MV Lite or any VS series transmitter. It runs the complete configuration of the Orban 5500 series 5-band, 2-band processor up to but not including the stereo generator. And that's because we actually utilize the stereo generator in our own transmitter. So it comes in out of this into the card and out of the card as AES EBU. And therefore it works with left and right AES EBU, live wire, shoutcast, iCast, USB, but not the composite input. We can't we don't demodulate the composite input to, to put it through the, the Orban inside. And uh, it, at $1,200, it's a fraction of the cost of any other processor that you can have. But again, the, the key feature of this is that not only uh, you know, does it, is it very cost-effective and, and, and beneficial to have the Orban processor inside the transmitter so that you can use the wide range of audio inputs and have the processor deal with that, but in addition, you're controlling it via the AUI. So all of the screens, all of the control you would normally have with Orban you have in this unit. We have 50 configurable presets. Presets are very, very powerful. Um, they are complete listings of all the configuration of a transmitter in a preset. So I can save the condition of a transmitter, the power level, the, the audio input, the audio input sensitivity, um, everything as a preset, even the Orban side settings, the RDS settings, the SCA settings, and then switch that to another uh, input uh, or switch it to another completely configuration by just hitting one button to change the preset. And that can be a, a very, very powerful tool. So um, sorry about the, uh, the fact that audio was lost during the time when we were talking about the AUI. Apparently we had a problem. There are AUI videos that explain everything about the advanced user interface on YouTube. and uh, So we will uh, hopefully catch up with that a little bit in the, in the Future. Um, let's talk about push radio a little bit. Push radio is a concept where, following on with the ideas of being able to store audio at the transmitter in the memory stick, some people want to use that as the primary audio source as opposed to an emergency backup. So in this situation, um, 
instead of having all of the audio in the studio, it's also maintained at each of the remote transmitters. This is designed particularly for networks of stations that are airing the same broadcasting, uh, the same content, uh, and heretofore might have been fed by satellite broadcasting. But in this case, we're utilizing the public internet, getting rid of the costs of, of the high cost of satellite. And our friends at ENCO, uh, who develops wonderful automation systems, have developed a push radio interface wherein instead of driving sound cards in the automation, they're driving our transmitters, the NV Light and the S series transmitters, and, and allowing the content to be actually stored on those memory devices at the transmitter and playlists updated as well via the internet. And then after the playlist has been played, the as played log is pulled back through the internet into the end interface and then reconciled with traffic and billing and music scheduling. So it, in, it improves the reliability of the system. It means that a satellite fade uh, doesn't cause a, an off-air situation at the station. It adds localism. You can push out a different weather forecast to different stations and, and uh, that still works. You don't have to push the same content out to every station. So that's push radio. There's also a webinar specifically about push radio that you may find interesting as well. And then Nautel Phone Home. Um, Scott, want to talk about Nautel Phone Home for a little bit? Yeah, so Nautel Phone Home is something we're very proud of and we're, we're working on uh, you know, a release of that. And really what it allows us to do is the transmitter would be delivering this content, and the content comes down to system operating uh, parameters, meters, and status. It sends it effectively to this, this server that's handling all this information and allows us access so that we can specifically look at the customer's transmitter at a specific time, not necessarily only at current, the current time, but history before a fault condition, during a fault condition, and what, what events happened uh, during, you know, so it really aids in troubleshooting. Okay, and, and I must mention that we were very proud to have won a pick hit award for Nautel Phone Home at the NAB show this year. We we uh, demonstrated the system working, and uh, it really is a fascinating tool that that advances the art of customer service a lot. And it also has potentially down the road has potentially advantages to people who have large numbers of transmitters because they can look at the current situation and their transmitters all in one place. So NV Light is, you know, contrary to what is uh, probably standard procedure these days in the broadcast industry where a company will introduce a product and say a year later or so it comes out on the market, NV Light's real. It's, it's out in the market, it's on the air, and they're shipping. That's right. And yes. you, you installed the very first one right here in Halifax. Yeah. The, uh, earlier this year we actually put this product on the air. And Rodney McQuaid, shown standing next to the transmitter, was pretty complimentary of your of your efforts, Scott. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I'm very pleased to, with the feedback that I'm getting from him. They're very, very happy with the product. Excellent. And here, just to, to make a finer point on things, there are a number of MV Light transmitters that have already been sold, but there's already a number of them sitting on the shipping dock ready to go. One of the design goals of the MV Light series is very fast delivery. We're we're working to the point where we'll be able to deliver or to ship a transmitter from the time that we have order to the time we ship maximum a couple of days. And uh, that's pretty exciting. We think that that is important because very rarely do people have enough uh, uh, knowledge ahead, ahead of time that uh, they're going to need a transmitter in a hurry. So this solves a lot of problems for a lot of people, I think. The other big news at the show was that we've introduced a four-year warranty. And this isn't just on the NV Light. This is on all the transmitter products sold and shipped after the or during the, or after the NAB show. And uh, so this is this is very exciting. And in essence, you know, somebody came up and asked me, Scott, why did we introduce a four-year warranty? And and the answer was because we could. Um, we actually did a bunch of research. Kevin Rogers in our customer service department and, and others did a bunch of research to figure out the, the cost of supporting our products and things, and we found that with the new series of transmitters, the NX, the NV, the NVS, and now the NV Light, um, the technologies have improved to the point where it just doesn't cost that much more to do a four-year warranty. So we can actually support our products out there 
better than we have in the past and and further I don't know draw the line and say uh, uh, you know get everything you can from customer service it's an important part of the product in the long term people don't buy a transmitter just for this year or next year or the year after they buy it for 20 years and the very first uh, 50 kilowatt AM transmitter we made what 30 years ago or something like that was downstairs the other day for a frequency yeah. change so People don't throw out an alternative really transmitter. Nice. We've, still, we've never discontinued support of any product. So I think we're reaching the end of things. Uh, to summarize a little bit about the MD Lite, um, we expect this to be a very robust transmitter. Fewer trips to the transmitter site. Everything in the design, all the efforts towards no single point failure, all the efforts towards getting the heat out of the box, all the efforts towards redundancy in every way. Is, is aimed towards that, and reduced engineering effort, less that you've got to do, built-in instrumentation, the spectrum analyzer and the Elisaju and everything else, unmatched control via the AUI, the highest solid state efficiency in the industry, the option for Urban 5500 series, that's what uh, the MD Light represents. It's, an, uh, it's a totally uh, optimized analog solid state FM transmitter with no compromises in, in any way. So here's the opportunity we have for questions for everybody. And let's see if we've got any questions that I can read here. Oh, boy, this is fun to read. We've got quite a nice stack here. Uh, the first one is, uh, is there any difference in performance and efficiency if running single phase versus three phase? Not at all. Okay, and the reason for the that power is... power supplies are, are configurable for 180 to 264. So with the, the, the wires I talked about on the terminal block being reconfigured, it applies the same voltage to the power supply. So they operate in their optimal mode at all times. Okay. There's another question about single sideband FM. Uh, there's been discussion in the industry about single sideband FM, and it's something we've talked about around here. It's not been implemented as yet. I think our friends at, uh, at Omnia are behind that, Mr. Cody. And uh, there's, uh, but that's not been implemented here at this point in time. Although we're interested, um, it talks about the whether or not the, it, it, the backup exciter is a is an option or is it standard. The backup exciter would be an option. Okay. All right. So there's just one exciter supplied, but if you want, you can provide, you can buy another one and plug it in and it will automatically switch from other mode. The switches and the cables and all that kind of stuff are, are there. Yeah, the switch, is, uh, the switch is definitely there, and there's two patch cables that would have to be installed with the box. It's actually a very, very simple installation. Okay. Uh, it says, when the AUI is is one, the audio when out. Oh, okay. That was explaining to us yeah. that we, we lost our audio. Sorry about that. Uh, will the internal Orban only accept aes audio? No, no. The Orban inside works with all the sources except composite. So it works with analog left and right. Um, it works with um, AES. AES. It works live. with live wire, shoutcast, icecast, and all of the recorded MP3s or, or, or wave files that you may have on a playlist. And those are the questions that I've got. So, uh, Scott, anything else you'd like to say? I, I have to tell you congratulations again. This is a, another winner. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm starting to get used to this with NV success and VS success and, and MV light, and, and who knows what's on the horizon. And a lot of it is due to the fact that we've got a lot of very good customers that come back and tell us what they like and what they would rather see differently. Absolutely, and I, I ask that you keep those suggestions coming because it's helping us develop the best products in the industry. And here's where you communicate that. Well, there's more information here, but let me talk about here. Email addresses, sales at nautel.com. We can get that information to Scott. He can get you an answer. But here, there's places to get more information about what we do and what we're doing. Uh, the, the Nautel Waves newsletter is interesting all the time. There's always good articles in there. Webinars are available. In fact, the AUI webinar that replaces the lost audio bit here. Sorry about that. A lot of stuff up on YouTube. Go to our channel on Nautel Limited on, uh, on YouTube. And then there's the Nautel store where all the parts and, and all that sort of thing are available right there on the store and you can you can order them and price them uh, yourself right on the online Nautel store. So that's about it for now. I uh, hope you'll uh, stop back by. If you didn't catch all the webinar, it will be recorded and on the website soon and you should be able to download it and see it there. For uh, Scott uh, Marchand and myself, Chuck Kelly, thanks for being here. Bye-bye.